So my name's Justin McLean. I'm here to talk about Apache Flex. Um, a little bit about who I am. I've been programming for 25 years. I've done all sorts of, all sorts of things, making web applications for about 15. Um, I've actually used Flex for a very long time, uh, since version 1.5, about eight years. I'm uh, uh, one of the PMC members and committers, and I think, unfortunately, sorry, give me one second, I have actually got the wrong slides. <laughs> Oh uh, dear, that's what you get for just uh, uh, um. yeah, that's better. I gave this talk at um, at uh, ApacheCon in EU, and you were just seeing the ApacheCon EU slides, but now I've got the right one, so we're all good. So anyway, so I'm a, a PMC member and committer, and I was the release manager for Apache Flex 4.9.0, and we just released 4.9.1 last night. We haven't made any official announcement about it yet. We've still got a bit of housework and, and clean up to do. Um, so wh who, who, who here has actually used Apache Flex before? Do you know anything about it? Uh, what's people's mostly their background? Are you Java developers? Mostly? Yeah. yeah that's generally the case in Apache. So. Flex is an application framework um, that makes you, enables you to make web applications, desktop applications, and mobile applications. It is developer friendly, and by developer friendly I mean it, it's especially if you come from a Java background, it's strongly typed when you need it, it has proper classes, it does lots of those things that you, know, you expect and like. It has debuggers, for example, that work. <laughs> So it's also designer friendly. Um, you can skin Flex applications really well. You can use CSS, uh, and you can do quite advanced skinning stuff. I'm mostly developer focused, so I'm not going to go into any of the skinning uh, or so forth. It also targets a, w a wide range of platforms. As I was saying, it targets both web uh, in the browser, desktop, and mobile. And um, currently, it compiles to run in the Flash VM war air on the desktop and mobile. There is a lot of work currently going on in Apache Flex on making it target JavaScript and HTML. And if you want to know more about that, you can actually just ask Alex, who's the chair of Apache Flex, who's just walked in. He's up the back there. So I've been sort of following what's going on in that, but I haven't been actively involved in that. Um, and Adobe, who donated Apache Flex, continues to provide support and resources. Uh, Alex, for example, is a full-time employee at Adobe. So. I said it was an application framework, so what does it actually do? So it provides the architecture for your framework. It gives you a set of common UI components like list boxes, ways of laying out your components inside your application. And it has, there's two different types of languages inside it, and I'll show you some examples of those in a minute, that uh, one of them is an XML markup language that enables you to lay out applications simply and quickly, and the other is uh, ActionScript, uh, which is a scripting language that enables you, you know, to do your business logic and, and other uh, code. Um, it gives you easy integration to back-end services. You want to talk to Java, uh, on the back-end you can do that very easily, and you can do that in a variety of ways. It understands as XML, it understands uh, web services, and it has its own format uh, as well, which you can uh, basically uh, package up JavaScript, uh, ActionScript objects, send them to Java, create them as Java objects, and vice versa. It's actually quite flexible along those lines. It's aimed, it's easy, easy to create mobile applications. Um, you, you're not going to be able to take 100% of your code and just make a mobile application out of it. It doesn't quite work that way because mobile is a very different user interface. You've got small screen sizes. Users interact with applications in a different way. And it's aimed at enterprise-style applications. So the current status is we are a top-level Apache project. We were voted in in mid-December, yay. <laughs> we have Apache Flex 4.9 released. That is the second release of Apache Flex. The first one was a parity release that was uh, just basically the same as the Adobe version of the SDK, but it was there to make sure that we had done all the right stuff. Um, we've also created an installer to help people install the software. Um, that, that has a lot of third-party libraries in it that uh, are for various licensing reasons, not part of the, the, the software download. So th this just helps people get up to speed and you know, it means we don't have to answer endless questions about how can I get this working, why won't it install. And we have a nice new shiny website. If you go to flex.apache.org, you can, you can see that in action. 
Um, and we've also done, um, there's been a lot of work in the last couple of months on ActionScript to JavaScript cross-compiler. Um, I believe at the current stage is that we can uh, take any pure ActionScript that doesn't involve any Flash Player calls and convert that straight to JavaScript and it'll just work. So, but again, Alex is the man to speak to if you want to know more about that. So ActionScript itself is a, is a scripting language. It's based on JavaScript and it has a lot of a Java and C features in it. So um, as I said, most people here are Java developers, so it will be familiar to you. Um, open source specification, compiler and VM. We now have the code to the compiler and, can mo and modify it. We also have code to a new, faster and better architecture compiler, which are, uh, people are working on as well. Inside ActionScript, it's, it's class-based, not prototype-based. So you have real classes, you have real package names. Um, you don't have all you know, the messiness in JavaScript of everything's basically in the global namespace and you've got to do all sorts of tricks to, to, to get that to work. Um, it's strongly typed, mostly. It doesn't have to be strongly typed. Um, and this actually gives it a, it's a, one of its best features, I think, because it gives you flexibility when you need it, but when you need safety, it gives you that as well. Um, it has compile time and runtime checking, and it also has a very rich event handling system, which is, is basically based on uh, DOM events. Um, it does have some of the JavaScript baggage that comes along with it. Uh, for example, it's got the implicit type conversion, but you can do all sorts of silly things with it. You know, it's, it's numbers get converted to strings, and the, you know, and sometimes numbers are not even a number, and there's, you know, there's these weird values of undefined and not a number and null, and you're never quite sure when you first start out with it, you know, what, it, what exactly that, that all means. Um, as I was saying, compared to Java, it's actually dynamic. It's a dynamic language. You can create basic objects. You can add methods at runtime. You can add properties at runtime. You can even change methods around at runtime if you want to do so. You'd have, want to have a good reason for doing that because that can be quite confusing code. But it's entirely possible. There's absolutely no difference between functions and variables. So uh, functions are first class citizens. You can pass them around as parameters to methods. Uh, as I said, you can change them, you can do all sorts of things. Setters and getters actually work, and they show up as properties. So there's no reason to write lots of set setters and getters codes that just do a single thing, like you know, return a single property or assign a property. It makes your code much easier to read, much more succinct. And it does mean that if you can start off by just having properties, and then later on, you can change those to methods which are setters and getters, and the interface to your class doesn't change. Um, there is no method overloading. Functions can have default parameters. And there's a few other nice features that it, that it has in there. Um, XML, for example, is a um, native type. And you can, uh, it has built-in query language for XML, which is called E4X, which makes it very, very easy to, to um, search for nodes in XML and even query it to get information out of an XML structure. Uh, and I th the, the, the arrays and collections are very similar to Java. Um, maybe with a, f a few more features. So we have MXML, which is one of the two languages inside Apache Flex. It's a UI markup language. And you use it to create very simple and flexible layouts. You can also use MXML to nest components together, which I'll, I'll show you an example in a minute. MXML also supports variable binding, which means that you can uh, bind values to say, say you've got a text input field and you can bind what that text is displayed to a variable. Whenever that variable changed, the text field will automatically update. You don't have to write any extra code to do that. It just does it by itself. Um, you can also, inside your MXML, you can also include ActionScript code and you can put this inside a code block. What actually happens under the hood in the old version of the compiler is that the MXML is actually compiled to ActionScript. So it's just an ActionScript class, and you can treat it like any other ActionScript class. So here's some MXML here. So this is a, just a, a snippet from a, a very simple application. But you can see that it's uh, XML, and that there's several form items here. They have some labels in there. And inside those labels, uh, you can see, say, where text equals person.name, that is binding to a name property of an instance of a, of a class which is of type person. Um, whenever that property changes, 
then that text label will get updated. You don't have to write any other code for that to happen. So what you can also do with M MXML is you can break up complex UIs into smaller bite-sized pieces and reuse those pieces as components. You can write components in either MMXML or in ActionScript, um, and they can be used either in MXML or ActionScript. The two things are totally interchangeable. And then you've got a couple of options about how you want to communicate between components. Um, you can set parameters by, or well, properties by pa passing in variables via variable binding, or you can, from inside the component, you can dispatch events to tell the outside world that something has changed and maybe you should do something about that. Again, I'll, I'll give you an example in a minute. So what we have here is a very simple MXML comp application. We have, this is actually a, 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 the base tag of application. And inside there we have two components, one called select person, one called person's details. And both of those are actually other MXML files. And that's, uh, you, they're just another bit of MXML. And it's, you can sort of basically think of it as an include, but it's a bit smarter than that, obviously. Uh, but it means that these components can be reused anywhere throughout your application and you can get a, a consistent look and feel and a consistent behaviour across your entire application um, and, and it really helps code reuse and cuts down on the amount of code that you need to write. So in this case here, we, with the select person, we can see that we're passing in a, a single, an, a, it's actually an array of people, so that's going to obviously show a list of some sort of uh, list of people. And then in the select person there, we uh, have, uh, that is an event that happens from inside the component. So when that event is dispatched, it's gonna call this method called change person and pass the event to it. And then in the person's details, there we're gonna have, um, it's gonna display a single person's details. We're passing in what the current person is. So basically this application is gonna be a list of people's names. You click on a person's name and then their details update side by side directly near it. So I've talked a little bit about binding, and I've showed you one side of it. So binding, it watches for any change of value of a variable, and then if that variable changes, anything that's bound to it automatically gets updated. So you don't have, generally you don't have to write any code to do that. If, if you're using MXML, you can just use the, the curly braces to, to say binding, and you can set up variables with a bindable metadata tag to say that watch this for changes. When it does change, please tell me. And there's two ways it's commonly used. One is to update a UI, like I was showing before in the, 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 you know, the people's details page, or also to pass uh, values into a component. So here's, here's a, a bit more, another example here, just including the other extra line, showing you how you create a, an action script variable, make it bindable, and then you can use that to pass it in to uh, various, in this case, labels on the screen that automatically get updated. So the other big part of the, the Flex framework is events. Now they uh, can be dispatched via user interaction with your, your application, like people clicking on buttons or moving scrollers around or, or whatever. Uh, war when something occurs in your application, like your application is resized. Uh, well, there's also timer events and other events like that. Um, you make a web service call that's totally asynchronous. When a fault happens or when the results come back to you, you also get an event, so you can, you can do stuff like that. So you register interest in an event by uh, adding an event handler uh, and uh, by listening for that event. Events have the ability of bubbling, so they basically bubble up through all the, the parent classes that contain them. Um, I'm not going to go into detail for that because we don't have a lot of time. Um, you can also create and dispatch your own custom events. So you can even make your own events and, and it's very easy to do so. And that means you can create your own components that uh, the interface to the outside world is these events that they dispatch. And that gives you this loose coupling. It means you can totally change a component, how it looks, how it feels, how it acts, but as long as it still dispatches those same events, as far as the outside world is concerned, it's, it's the same component. So we have event handlers. So these are methods that are called when an event occurs. Uh, they always take an event or a subclass of event and return nothing. 
Um, and inside an event handler, you, you actually have a little bit of control over what you can do. I mean, generally what you want to do is, you know, you, you'll have some application logic that says, when I receive this event, go off and do something. But you can also cancel events. You can stop them from bubbling and moving up through the chain. Um, you can prevent the default behavior, like if they're talking about keyboard events uh, inside a thing, you know, if someone hits tab, you can stop tab from doing what it normally does uh, and, and make it do something else. So this gives you actually quite a lot of flexibility in, in, in terms of events. So here's a, an example of some action script code that is an event handler. So we have this event handler called on change person, and you can see that it takes um, an event of type index change event. Um, and that, what that is, is that's actually the, uh, it's a, in this case it's a list box, and that gives you the selected item in the list box. So you can, you, what we're now doing here, this is inside a component, we're creating our own custom event. So this is a class we've created ourselves called person event. This doesn't exist inside the Flex framework. And then we can create a new event and dispatch that. So we can tell the outside world that a new person has been selected. And it doesn't matter about the mechanism that that person was selected in. All that matters is that that event gets dispatched. And then in the actual list itself, to actually set up that event handler, you've, we've just got a change equals and point it to our method. So that means whenever the list changes, call this method. So it's as simple as that. Basically what we've got in the Flex framework is MVC for free. So if you think of custom components as your view, and you have your view bind to a simple data model, which are just simple action script classes with properties in them, and then inside your custom components you dispatch events um, that basically tell your application, which is you can think of as your controller, to update the model. And when then once the model gets updated, because you're using binding, all the views automatically update. So there's actually not a lot of code you, you, you have to write to be able to get MVC in, inside the Flex. Uh, there are other frameworks around that are ActionScript frameworks and, and Flex frameworks, and you, you can go ahead and use those. But quite often, for, you know, depending on what project size and what you're doing, there's often no reason to actually use a framework with, with Flex. So, as mentioned before, the Flex runs in quite a few different targets. So it runs in browser applications, and currently that runs in the Flash Player virtual machine. So it's a Swift file, um, and so you're going to have some limitations there. It's not going to run on um, you know, uh, latest versions of the Android system in the browser. It's not going to run on iOS. Um, but I'll, there, there is a way around that, and I'll tell you in a minute. We're currently working on a JavaScript, JavaScript HTML target, and um, there's been great progress on that. When exactly that's going to be released and 100% functional and working, I can't tell you. So, as well as running in the browser, the Flex can also run on the desktop. It runs in the Air runtime, and the Air runtime can actually be packaged up with the application. So you don't have to have the user in, have to have Air installed. Uh, so uh, you know, that, that is it reduces the barrier to entry again. Um, and it's very, very simple to change a Flex application that runs in the browser to a Flex application that runs in the desktop. All you have to do is chase, change the S application tag to a Windows application tag, and that, that'll get it running. And then you may actually want to take advantage of the fact that you're on the desktop, and you, uh, Air supports a lot more than what the Flash Player supports, so you've got file access, you can actually view web websites, it's got a HTML view, you've got SQL Lite built into there so you can have databases, you can have native windows, menus, and there's, there's lots more. Um, and then finally you can actually make Flex run as a mobile application. And what that happens is it actually uses the Air runtime, but it cross compiles the application into native applications for both iOS and Android and a couple other platforms as well. Um, so once you've got that native application, you can deploy it in an, in an app store. Now, because it's running in air and it's using the Flex SDK, the Flex SDK has been optimized for mobile. Um, I, I just have to say that it, it's, it's, like, it's great. You can make applications really quickly. It's not going to be suitable for everything. Right? There are some minor performance issues. So you know, if you want to go off and make a 3D game, I wouldn't suggest you'd be using Flex. As, the solution for that. But if you want an enterprise style application that looks up data and displays data and has the user interact with it, it's, it's probably a good fit for that. 
Um, the application structure is slightly different to like a desktop or a web application. So you're going to have to make some modifications to your code. In my experience, about 80 to 90% of your code is going to be exactly the same. So, but as I said, mobile is a totally different beast. You've got small screens, users interact them with it in different ways. You're not going to have a data grid with 100 columns on it that you can sort and drop, drop and drag and move about. It just doesn't work. So the, um, and it does support a lot of mo mobile features as well, like, uh, well, obviously touch. Uh, you can also support gestures, notifications, and you know, any, anything else that, that mobile users, users are used to. If there is some, the, one of the issues is that mobile uh, operating systems tend to have frequent updates. You know, every year there's a new Android update, for example. And the Flex SDK may not keep up with that. So as a, a way around that, it has the concepts of native extensions. And native extensions are uh, basically uh, a C or Java code, um, which will enable you to, to do other things. It's like a DLL. You know, you can make it call it to do something that the Flex can't actually do. So uh, Flex itself has many, many, many more features. Um, as I said, it's got advanced skinning and styling. There's a debugger and profiler. There's uh, some very good unit testing frameworks. I haven't mentioned uh, data grids and the UI control for data grid, which enables you to drop and drag columns, sort columns, uh, group columns, uh, have complex item renderers and editors inside a data grid. Uh, you, can have, you can even have a data grid inside a data grid if you really wanted to. You know, there's, I'm not sure why you'd want to, but you could. Um, it supports uh, runtime shared libraries and modules, so they're probably not so important these days. Um, it also, as well as the styling, supports CSS, and it has really good international support. So um, I'd like anyone here who's interested to get involved, um, download the SDK, have a bit of a play with it, and give us some feedback. You know, sign up to the mailing list. Um, help out in some JIRA bugs if you, if you, if you can. And we're also fairly new to Apache, like we've, we've only been in Apache for about a year. So quite often we need help with things that are not Flex related. So um, these slides are publicly available um, and they're actually already up on Google Docs. Uh, feel free to download them. There's a whole lot of links at the end. And I thought what I'd do for the remaining time is um, I've actually got an application those code snippets came from and I can show you that application and uh, we'll just ask for any, any questions. So. so inside here, if we just take a look at the, um, the desktop app, uh, uh, sorry, the browser app first. So I'll just, I'll just run it to give you an idea of it and then I'll go through and explain some of the code. So as I said, it's a very simple application. It just consists of uh, a list of people. And when I change that list, a person's details next to it get updated. Hmm? Oh, sorry. It's, uh, something's gone wrong with the... Uh, it shouldn't be the resolution because it's... Projectors are the bane of my life, I have to say. <laughs> All right, I'll just slide it across a bit and you, sh you should be able to see that. So, so you can see there's a list of people, select the people, it changes. So uh, yeah, we can see the code there, that's good, so that's good enough. So inside here we have an application, we can see that we're having a horizontal layout, we have two components side by side. We can very simply see that there's a, a list of people and the current person. When that selected person changes, it calls this uh, event handler called change person here. This gets called and it sets the current person. We have two components in here. If we go and have a look at one of these, here's the select person. We can see that it's just a list which is bound to an array of people. When that list changes, we call another event handler. That event handler creates a custom event and dispatches that. So we're not talking about a lot of code here. It's, it's all very simple and straightforward. Um, in the person details, we're just binding to the current person. So when that current person changes, 
that variable will actually change, well, property will change, and this is just a simple property with that. So I'll just, I'll just show you the, the, you know, the object model here too. So you can see that the object model is very, very simple. Right, you know, we just have a person with name, email, Apache ID, that sort of thing. So to change this to be a desktop app application, um, the only thing that has to change is that you, uh, oh, I, think I didn't even change it to, to windowed application. I should have changed that to windowed application, but you don't even have to do that, it seems. So if I just run that one, so this is not running in the browser now, this is running in air, you get the same application that just works as a desktop application. And the Chrome for that's gonna be different depending on what platform you're on. And with a little bit of work, and just rearranging the, the, um, the application a little bit, we'll actually get a, um, a mobile application. This is just gonna be running in a, a simulator, but I could cross compile this and it would run on iOS or Android. And you can see that we've got a list here, and then when we click on a list, it shows the details like that. Because obviously on a small screen, you're not gonna have that side by side. So at that point, I think I'll just open it up for questions. Do we have any, have any questions? Nobody? I, I do not know the exact number of users, but it is a large number. Um, I think at one point in time, it was estimated there were 300,000 Flex developers. Um, I assume the number is now less than that, but it's, it would still be significant. And I'm, I'm, um, I'm a freelance developer, and I, I basically do still, still code in Flex full time, and I'm seeing no shortage of work, so. So is it more to use for the uh, enterprise apps? Flex is mostly built, used for building enterprise apps. Uh, and also mobile applications. Um, because of the, the fact that you don't have to write two applications, one for you know, iOS and one for Android, and it has more features and performs either on par or better than sort of some of the HTML hybrid solutions, uh, it's still being used for that. Mm -hmm, no problem. Yes, up the back there, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is confusing. It's the, the branding. The branding from Adobe made it very confusing, unfortunately, because they they put everything under the under the Flash platform. So, Flex itself is a, is an SDK that is just source code, right? So it runs in the Flash player in the browser, and runs on desktop and mobile using Air. The Flash player and Air are just two different runtimes. Currently, Apache Flex is trying to make a third runtime, which is HTML and JavaScript. So uh, both Flash and Air are owned by Adobe and are not open source products. Okay, but, so, Flex runs but Flex runs on them. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, up the front. The IDE was, uh, Flash. Oh, the the IDE there is, is was a Flash builder, but it's just an Eclipse based builder. You don't have to use Flash builder to create. Uh, Flex applications. You can use IntelliJ. Uh, I think there's um, there's a few others out there as well. So you can basically use your editor of choice. You can actually also even use co the command line and Vi if you wanted to. Yeah. Well, as an experiment the other day, we we um, most of the people on the on Apache are either OS X or Windows users. We don't have a lot of Linux people, and uh, it's actually we've just found out that the uh, binary distribution for OS X works perfectly on Linux. So no changes required. <laughs> so, but we did. I had to do that by just playing around with the command line to see what would what would work. So the compilers themselves are command line compilers. You can call them via Ant or Maven or whatever you know your choice is. Uh, it, it 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 does have some benefits in there. So to to help you, the the um, integrated debugger, for example, is there. But it's definitely not essential that you use it. It's I, I mostly use it because that's what I'm familiar with. Any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, for integration tests, um, the framework itself um, it has a test suite called Mustella, which basically takes um, it takes a whole lot of little uh, flex applications and compiles them and then runs them and takes 
bitmaps of the screens and then compares the, the screen bitmaps. That's sort of what you want for integration testing. Uh, for more unit testing style, there's FlexUnit, which is um, traditional JUnit style testing. And there's also um, another testing framework called uh, um, MockAlert, uh, which is, uh, uses uh, spies and mocking. If, if that's more your, your sort of thing, that's well worth looking into. Sorry? Uh, I'm not aware of that, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, there is. So the, yeah, there's actually the whole there's the automation library, isn't it? So basically anything can, and there's also uh, Selenium also works quite well with it as well. Yes, up the back. Sorry. So yeah, you said that uh, we owned the air and the answer. Yes. Yes. So what happens to those? Are they getting maintained with? No, they're not. No, we, we, have no, we have no control over those. Adobe can do whatever they want with them uh, and they're not going to tell us what's going to be happening. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they are still well supported and they will be for, for, for many years. So uh, in the, the, the short term future, there's no real danger there. And we are, as I said, working on HTML and, and JavaScript to, to, to try and have other options available to us. And it may be that we'll actually get the compilers to, the, the, the new compiler is quite modular and you can actually quite easily extend it to target other languages as well. So it may end up that, that Flex actually target, targets uh, Swing or something like that. There are, to, to, in my experience, there are a few frameworks that do all of what Flex can do, and and they don't do it in the same way. Uh, Flex is quite concise uh, when you write it, and it's a, you can you can be very very productive with it. You can you can write very complex ap applications with large teams in a short amount of time. Um, whereas, and you have better testing and less cross-platform issues, less cross-browser issues. There's, there's still a lot of reasons why Flex is a, is, a, is a framework that you would want to use. I mean, it entirely depends on your own business case and what the application you're, you're making. Obviously, Flex is not always going to be the best answer. But there, there is definitely a large set of problems out there where Flex solves it quite well and solves it quite better than a lot of the other frameworks. How are you for time? I do? Oh, wow. I went too fast. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so, the sounds really cool. Yeah. How do you deal with the dependencies in order that you're finding on the category? For example, a selected item, for example, it is an issue, um, and you can sometimes run into a problem with it. One of the, the, the things about the Flex framework is that when you actually set a property, a, under the hood, a lot of it is it says, like height and width, for example. You say, I want to change the height, I want to change the height, I want to change the height. It doesn't change it every single time. It basically batches up all those changes and then changes it once on, on a, there's a frame rate inside Flex, like, you know, for 30 frames a second type thing. So a lot of those problems disappear because all the updates are done at one single time to most properties. Uh, but you can still run into, in, into issues where order of binding is, is important and uh, you, you can work around that in other ways. Generally, uh, what you can do, because you can bind to, you don't have to bind to simple variables, you can bind to complex ones and you can put all the values inside that. So as long as that's created at, at once and then you change that, rather than changing a whole lot of little properties in, a, in order, you just create a new object, set all the properties and then change that uh, entire um, change that entire object and that means all of them get set at once. So th there's, there's quite easy ways around that but it, it, I have run into a few problems where it's taken me a while to work out. Any other questions? No, good, thanks for coming along and um, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
The um, s slides are already up on the web, and um, the code is for those applications are on GitHub. If you want to take a look, uh, send me an email, ask me any questions, find me at the conference, so I'm happy to discuss it. Thank you.